Hi there viewers and welcome to the Repair It, Don't Wreck It channel. Today I will be walking you through adjusting the valve clearances, also known as valve lash adjustment on a 17 kilowatt air-cooled Generac generator. This job will require some patience, but with some practice, I can assure you that you will get this unit running to the manufacturer's specifications. This video is part of my series on Generac whole home generators. Before you get started, turn off the generator, remove your 7.5 amp fuse from the controller, turn off the gas, and what I like to do is to remove the spade connector from the starter just to be on the safe side. After removing the spark plug lead, if you have some compressed air, blow around the spark plug well to remove any dirt or debris. This will help prevent any dirt from falling into the cylinder when removing the spark plug. While you're there, don't forget to do the back one. Now you can use your 5.8 spark plug socket to remove the front and back spark plugs. Make sure the socket is fully engaged on the spark plug. You don't want to break the porcelain. Once the spark plug is loose enough with the wrench, you can remove it the rest away with your hand. The skills that you are learning here, removing the spark plugs, adjusting the valves, these are skills that can be used on most overhead valve engines. These spark plugs look pretty good. You could check the gap on them and reinstall them. But if you want to buy brand new ones, always check the gap and you could put those in. Now in order to rotate the motor, we want to get access to the fan. There are two panels that you would need to remove. All the bolts on these panels are 10 millimeters. There's really nothing tricky about removing these bolts. Just keep track of them so you don't lose any. Generac has manuals for most of their generators. I would go online and purchase one. They're very good. Once you get the two panels off, you'll find the muffler underneath. This would be a good opportunity to, to have a good look at it, make sure there isn't any rust or holes or any deterioration. What I have found when working on these generators, you really don't need a lot of special tools. If you do work on your own vehicles, you probably have most of them. I think with the right coaching, most people can change plugs, air filter, change the oil, or even replace the battery. It's not all that difficult. When you are rotating the engine from the fan end, turn it counterclockwise. The best way I can describe it is to grab the fan and push it up towards the muffler. Now that we've got the covers off, we can jump back to the valve covers. There's four 10 millimeter bolts to remove. Once you get the valve cover removed, check the inside of it. What you're looking for is to see if the oil has been overheated or not changed on a regular basis. If the oil has been overheated or not changed on a regular basis, you may find a brown film on all the interior surfaces. If it's in really bad shape, you're going to get sludge, especially around the rocker arms. This is one way of checking for top dead center on the compression stroke. What I'm using here is I have my compression gauge set up with the gauge removed from the hose. On the end, I put a balloon so as I come up on the compression stroke, it will inflate. Looking at the valves, exhaust opens, intake opens, and when both valves are closed and the balloon inflates, you know you're on the compression stroke at top dead center. You can do the same thing with a piece of wooden dowel or a straw. So the piston is coming up and both valves are closed. Now as the piston goes down and starts to come up, the exhaust valve will open. And then as the piston goes back down, the intake will open. And then when both valves are closed and the piston's coming up, you know you're on the compression stroke and top dead center. For this engine, the valve lash should be set between two and four thousandths of an inch. 
I think most people would shoot for three thousandths of an inch and call it a day. As you can see in the video, I couldn't get the two thousandths of an inch into the valve, so both of them were tight. The jam nut on this valve train is half inch, and the hex wrench for adjusting the valve is 10 millimeters. What I'm doing is starting off with the two mil, then the three, and then the four mil. I'm trying to get an idea of which way I gotta go with the adjustment on this. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm a little bit rusty, as you can see. Once you feel a slight drag on the feeler gauge on the particular setting you want, then you can tighten it. I have found with this setup, once I tighten the jam nut, it gets a little loose. If I could do this again, I would use the two mil and get it so it has a fairly good drag. And then once I tightened it, I think it would be very close to the three mil, which is right in the middle. Now that the exhaust valve is done, I can do the intake, which is the same procedure and the same settings. For some reason, if you slide the feeler gauges from the right side of the valve, it seems to be easier. I can't explain why, but it was obvious when I was doing it. Here you can see I'm struggling with the three mil gauge. Now when I go to the right side, it slips in with no trouble whatsoever. You can see the three mil gauge has just the right amount of drag. When I try and put the four mil in, it's very tight and I almost have to force it. I think we're right on the money here. Now you can tighten that half inch jam nut up. Make sure you hold back with the hex wrench. Once you've got that jam nut tight, go back and double check with your feeler gauges. I think we're in pretty good shape here. The three mil gauge has just the right amount of drag. When I try and put the four mil in, it won't go in and it's tight. So I know I'm exactly where I want it. Here's a bird's eye view. This should give you a good idea of what we're trying to do here. Here you can see the three mil will go through with a bit of drag. And when I go to the four mil, it will go in, but I've really got to push on it. So I know I'm in between the three and the four. I'm happy with this. Now you can remove the oil fill plug from the valve cover. What you're seeing here is a deposit that's the consistency of yogurt. This is formed by the engine not running long enough and hot enough to get rid of moisture that accumulates in the top part of the engine and specifically in the valve cover itself. I'm cleaning this up with a bit of carb cleaner. You can see the inside of that valve cover is in perfect condition. This film or goo or whatever you want to call it is really not detrimental to the engine. As long as you change the oil as specified in your manual, I wouldn't worry about this at all. Now we're getting close to wrapping up this job. As always, make sure everything is perfectly clean. The valve cover gaskets are in perfect condition, so I didn't see any point in changing them.
I must be getting a little bit tired. I'm struggling to get the valve cover on right. All I had to do is look at the writing. Now you can put your 10 millimeter bolts back in. Put them in all four corners a little loose, and once they're all in, then you can go around, cross pattern, and tighten them up. Here I'm using a quarter inch drive socket so I don't overdo it. The valve cover gasket is fairly stiff. It's not soft like say a cork or some kind of a foam. So as it gets tight, you'll get to the point where you'll feel that you can't go much more and that's all you need. I've done a few of these and I've never had them leak. Now you can install the spark plugs, but always check the gap on them first. For this engine, they're set at 0 .040. I like to tighten the spark plugs by hand as far as I can. After that, you can put your spark plug wrench on. Make sure it's firmly seated. A lot of spark plug wrenches have a rubber grommet inside to help hold the spark plug in place. So sometimes you can get fooled thinking it's all the way down and it's not. Just make sure. These spark plugs have a gasket on them, so as you're tightening them down and you're getting near the end of the travel, they're kind of mushy. I found when the mush goes out, I'll give it an extra eighth of a turn and that seems to do the trick. Now you can do the back cylinder. It's exactly the same as the front. Now you can check the valve lash with the three different sizes, the two, the three, and the four mil. Once you're satisfied, then you can tighten it up. Now you can gap the spark plug. It is set at 0 .040 thousandths of an inch. The procedure for installing the spark plug on the rear cylinder is no different from the front. You can see using the spark plug wrench with the adapter for the universal makes it much easier to get access to that back spark plug. I'm also pushing on the insulation to get it more in the vertical position. The rear valve cover is exactly the same as the front. Four 10 millimeter bolts tighten in a crisscross pattern. Now you can put the two cover plates back on. All the bolts are the same except for one. The bolt with the larger thread goes on the top as I have shown, and the other with the smaller thread will go down at the bottom where it attaches to the chassis. Put all the bolts in hand tight and a little bit loose. Some Fit. of the panels you may have to wiggle to get them started. Now I'm installing the only bolt that is larger than the rest. It has the same size head, 10 millimeter. I'm not sure why this one is larger than the others. 
The problem is, is the hole in the bracket is the exact same size as the bolt, so you need to fiddle with it to get it started. We're down to the last bolt. There's two bolts that hold that bracket on. In the future, if I was going to work on this machine, especially in the front around that area, I would move the bracket to have better access to everything. Now that all the bolts are in hand tight, you can go around and snug them all up. Now that all the bolts are tight, put the spade connector back on the starter. Make sure it's on firm and tight. Give it a bit of a wiggle to double check. Turn on your fuel. Install the 7.5 amp fuse on the controller. Because I removed the fuse from the controller, I've created an alarm. So to reset it, Push escape, then enter. Now you can start the generator and let it run for a while. Listen for any abnormal sounds in the valve train. Once you're satisfied that everything is okay, put the controller in the auto position. Now you can install the door. On the bottom there are slots in the chassis that will accept the pins that are on the bottom of the door. And on the top of the door, this elongated slot will go into the boss that's on the front of the frame. If my video is helpful to you, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, please reach out to me in the comment section, and I will do my best to respond or point you in the right direction. If you'd like to see more generator repair videos or general repair and maintenance tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and remember, repair it, don't wreck it.